After 35 years retired from work as a shearer, this 71-year-old has picked up the handpiece. And my good friend Bobby Pepper, he was scratching around for a shearer one day and he said, he came and he looked at me and said, I really need a man, can you, I really need, can you give us a hand down? And I just said, no, Bobby, uh, not quite like that, but no, Bobby. And um, oh, you should do me a favour if you could help me, Darren. I said, shucks, right I Went up and I actually enjoyed it. Just the atmosphere, just the freedom to be yourself again. Just the freedom just to speak and think and say and have a laugh and a giggle and, a, and just with no one jumping on your head. Telling you can't say that, you can't do that, all the can'ts, you know, there's a lot of can'ts in society today. The return has made him reflect on a career in the sheds. Originally I was shepherding in New Zealand and, um, and there was, wasn't much money working for the farmers and the shearers kept coming in. They had nice female rouseabouts and they always seemed to have plenty of money, had plenty of fun. I thought, well, that makes a lot more sense to me than working for the farm. I realised there's more money working off farmers. And then we started travelling. Um, New Zealand, Australia, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Australia, America, Norway, Sweden, England, Scotland, uh, back to America, Canada. Um, and we just started a global 12 years of globally shearing, I guess. And we opened the way. We, it was good fun. It was really good fun at the time. And we made really good money. Really good money. He was a gun at the time, shearing 200 plus sheep a day. So how many sheep can he shear these days? I just plug along, mate, just plug along and behind. There's no numbers to give anymore. No, they just plug along. Yeah, plug along and smile, you know. After several decades' work as a shearer, Daryl down tools. So then it was a progression. Um, I like poking around sheds and walking in sheds, and I walked into the University of West Australia, and they were building robots down there, and, um, and, and I guess we set up a consultancy, and I had period of my life building robots and working in academia, which was a really interesting period of my life. But nothing beat the atmosphere of the wool sheds. You can come back to the wool shed and, and you can dish it out and they dish it back and it's actually good fun. There's a freedom of speech that you don't get in town. It's not, not happening around town. Um, and it's good and there's something about hard work. It, it's, a, it's a physical defrag and a rebooting of the brain. Um, yeah, and, and it's actually, you feel a lot better for it. It's, it, it's sort of, there's a breed of us that just don't fit in. We just don't fit. Um, we're not, you know, we can play golf, but we're extremely competitive. We can do a lot of things, but we just don't seem to fit into the normal mode. And, and we just like to do things a little bit different. And, and, and I guess, and, and the other reason I like it is a lot of my old mates can't. They can't do it anymore. And it's just to piss them off, really. Daryl's wife is similarly happy about his return to shearing. I think she enjoys the freedom. <laughs> she just, she knows where I am, she doesn't have to worry about me. <laughs> Puts a bit of entertainment into the conversation. And she's complained quite regularly. She's heard on my stories 25 times and more than 25 times. She's heard on my stories 100 times. And, and I think, well, it's time to go and get a few new stories, really.